as I, as I think about you all during the week, and I think about my, my part, do I have a part? And um, I'm, I'm thinking about that I want to I wanna bring something that is not only just sound theology, but I, I'm really interested, and I think that's why I so enjoy my time reading the mystics, because I am extremely experiential. I am, um, I live, I live to experience God. It's my greatest joy. It's my greatest thrill. It's the greatest experience. You know, um, people talk about having a bucket list. My bucket list is Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, Father, over and over and over again. And so, and I, I find that as the older I get, the more I define who I am. The m older I get, the more freedom I have to define who I am. And the more, when God says don't drink the Kool-Aid, he's saying it to me too. And he's saying, don't, don't take what the world is serving up. And I was thinking about um, Isaiah 53 um, this week, off and on, and the thing I came to um, was that um, Isaiah 53 was probably written maybe like 681 B.C., something like that. I mean, hundreds of years before Christ was born. And the prophet Isaiah speaks to the one, speaks to the one who is coming. Speaks, he speaks to the person of Jesus Christ in that portion of Scripture. And you remember, surely our griefs, he himself born, our sorrows he carried, yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. And the chest, the chastening, this is what the New American Standard says, the chastening. For our peace fell upon him. So today I come in the peace that Jesus bore for me. He took care. You know, when you chasten a child, you bring correction. And you uh, bring an adjustment. And so every adjustment, hallelujah, that is needed for me, to enter into this peace was laid upon Christ. And that, that means you and I always have access to peace because that anything that would stand, any, any line of correction that God wants to give us has already been made possible and finished uh, with a Christ. And so as I was thinking about this beautiful experience of the peace that passes understanding, the absolute separation, the sanctification from the world, this lack of attention to the world and to what it's serving up. The latest thing I read by some chef on TV says that in 6 to 12 months, we can expect our shortage to hit. And I was thinking, now, if I am going to believe that, uh, Food shortage, the chef, yeah, the food shortage. And so I just, I'm just telling you these things because these are the battles. These, these things would chasten my peace. These things would disrupt my peace, but they're on Christ. And so I do not have to worry about it. Here's what Paul said in Philippians. Four. Four. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit 
be known to all men. I was thinking that Dana and Diane and Cinda, all the people, and you guys, all of you people who work in the marketplace, Brian, you are exactly the manifestation of the role of the equipping of the apostolic church. They didn't equip the church to be officials of the church. They equipped the church to go out into the world and be the light of the world and be the voice of God and to be the heart of God and the feet of God, to be Jesus, to be God incarnate inside of you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Don't, don't back off that. It's Christ in you that has the appeal. It is Christ in you that is the valuable part of your life. And for any of you, whether maybe it's your family, maybe, maybe, maybe you're retired, but you still have a destination where you are Jesus Christ, the light of the world made manifest. And if you're going to drink the Kool-Aid, you will be ill-equipped. You will not say the right thing. You will not think the right thing. You will not feel the right thing. You will not go to the right places. And you will mislead people about the goodness of God. The whole Old Testament is about God delivering his ungrateful children. Say, that was me. I'm talking about somebody else. But if we think about the story of the word of God is the story of God's redemptive goodness and continual eternal love for all of his creation. And when they messed up, they got a correction. And I want to tell you, Isaiah spoke to that. He said, this is going to happen. It's going to happen if you don't change. And they did not change and it happened. They were carried off into captivity. There are people that are being carried off into captivity right now because they think God is somebody other than good. Even in his judgments, it's redemptive. In the, in the purpose of it is to convict and to bring men and women back. So I'm, I'm here to declare that when Betty said, Thank you, Betty, that God is good. And when she stood up in the funeral of her sons, her grandsons, and her husband, she said that God is good. And, and here, is, here is the truth of the matter. I know that she prayed for those kids, and she would pray, Lord, if they can't make it, take them home. And when they went home, she knew they knew So Paul says rejoice. Now I'm gonna now we have to listen to what Paul says because at this end of the portion of scripture he's gonna say, if if you'll do what I do, you'll have the peace that passes understanding. <laughs> It'd be like me standing up here a few months ago and saying, Okay, I'm really hacked off. I really don't like the way things are going. This person, they took this, they did this, blah, 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 blah. Now, that is not the road to peace that passes understanding, let me tell you. I don't know what your lingo is, but I have a very voracious mouth. I can either bless with it or curse with it. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'll say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Now, we, I used to read that thinking that he thinks the Lord is near because he's coming back. He knows that the Lord is near because he lives in the presence of God all the time. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I think what 
what we, what we want to focus on is we want to focus on how do we look as a representative of Jesus Christ? What, what is it that is uniquely? And when we speak life, speak life, it has to come out of life. It can't come out of fear. It can't, God didn't give, it a fear, give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So th- you, can, you can check yourself. You can check yourself. So anyway, he goes on and he says, I'll just, this, this is so beautiful. Verse 8, I'm about to finish. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellency and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The thing, and this is what, this is when Paul, just Paul is just so out there. It's not timid about who he is. Hello? The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Now, that would be a good self-examination. What is it that, that you would want somebody to emulate in your life? Things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I'm just saying that when we read the word of God, when we read the the epistles that Paul wrote, we need to emulate them, and we need to believe what Paul believed, and we need to carry that belief with us wherever we go, because if we do, we'll be emulating the thing that Paul says will bring us peace. And when I think about all of the gracious and wonderful things that God did for us through his son, Jesus Christ, I want to say, and I love to celebrate the feast, and I love to celebrate everything. I love the party. But I just want to tell you, I believe that the greatest manifestation of Tishri was Jesus Christ. The greatest manifestation of 5783 was held in Christ before the foundations of the world. I believe that all of the beauty and the provision is wrapped up in Jesus Christ. He is the fulfillment of all things. And when we think about how we remember these months and what kind of they bring into focus, we need to say it's already finished in Christ. It's nothing that we're waiting. We're not waiting for the next month to get the next good thing from Jesus. It is already available in everything. So it doesn't matter if you exactly know what the seventh month or the first month, if you know what the the spiritual um, uh, year is in uh, Nisan or the civil uh, year in head of the year in the fall it does it does not really it's not really necessary for your, you to enjoy all the blessing of God they're already wrapped up in Christ and so when we do share these things and Sandy's going to talk about some of them what we it's just a it's just a checklist are you doing this you want you want to have that and so as we do uh, we can understand the greatness of God. Our God is busy at work causing people to believe. And I don't know about you, and you won't hear it on CNN, and you won't hear it on Fox, but when that hurricane headed into Florida, I want to assure you that our God was hearing prayers, answering prayers, and maybe some who had never seen a miracle of God experienced it in that because the whole body of Christ worldwide was praying for those men and women and their families, and their, they have faced tragedy, but our God, even in the midst of that, those of us who were untouched, unscathed by this, ought the more to be in prayer and thanksgiving for what he is going to provide for them. It's not, you know, whenever you escape sickness and disease, 
whenever all your needs are visibly manifested according to Christ and his glory. That is a greater responsibility on you to take up the cares and, and the needs of others, but not with fear, with confidence, with confidence.